Hey there CNCers, Scott here again for CNC Labs. You're just starting out with your CNC and you've never used CAD CAM software before and you're wondering which one is best for you? We created the What Software Should You Use video back in 2002 for Easel, Carbide, Maker and VCarve and we wanted to do a follow up to share our experiences with them since then. We'll run you through some of the pros and cons and if you stick around to near the end, I'll tell you which one is my favorite. I'll give you a hint, it starts with a V. We also wanted to thank everyone who contributed to our post on your favorite software. The answers helped us make this video actually better. Before we get into the softwares, this video isn't sponsored by any of the software companies I'm going to talk about. And although I work for CNC now, keep in mind I had my machine for a year before I started working here. So part of this is my personal as well as my professional CNC journey. The one thing I love about this is there are no wrong answers here, but I do have a clear favorite. Uh, this is my CNC software journey and yours may not have the same forks on the road. If you're a beginner, I'd like to share the path I followed up to this point with you and hopefully it helps you on your journey. Uh, if you are advanced and have your own favorite, I will almost guarantee learn something from you. Anywho, we're going to jump into the software side of things and what I use these days and why. I want to clarify what CAD and CAM and sending software means. CAD is a software typically used to design your items. CAM is a software that is typically used to create the G-code files that are then loaded into the sending software to manufacture what you've designed. In the case of the four programs we're going to talk about today, they're considered CAD-CAM combined software, meaning you can design and save your G-code needed to manufacture your designs. Sending software is typically what controls the machine itself once a G-code file has been loaded. I clearly recommend G-Sender. Um, I dabbled with UGS and C and CJS, but found their interface was lacking and just didn't really enjoy them. So I checked out Gsender and it had an easier to digest interface with all the functionality and much more needed to control my machine and get my jobs done. So what are the four most popular softwares that most people will look at when starting their CNC journey? Easel, Carbide, Maker, and VCarve. I know there are lots of other good options out there, Fusion, Onshape, SolidWorks, and many others, but the four I named seem to be the main ones that people come up with when people are just starting out on their CNC journey, and that's what we're focusing on with this video. Let's start with Easel by Inventables. I did use Easel when I was starting out for a few reasons. I had jobs already lined up that needed to get going in a hurry, which Easel allowed me to do because of its simplicity. It's super beginner friendly. And two, it was free and it did everything I needed to do at that time. However, I did find fairly early into my journey that there was a need to explore more powerful software options, especially for the sending software side of things. I'll cover those later in this video. For Easel, there are both free and pro versions. Some of the things I really do like about Easel. Uh, when you're just starting out, there is no need for sending software. It's all in one from design to carve, which again, when I was starting out, gave me one less thing to worry about right off the bat. Uh, it can be intimidating enough picking up a new software and trying to play with it. Uh, I was able to create my design and send it directly to carving straight from the software. Really easy, really fast. That was lovely. Uh, another thing I really do like about it is with the paid version, the pro version of Easel, you get its handy apps library. Uh, this includes things like the puzzle creator, box builder, extra fonts, graphic libraries. And again, when you're just starting out, having some of those things at your disposal they're really handy. It saves you having to worry about having how to create the actual design and just being able to import it and use it. Some of the things I do not uh, now particularly like about Easel, again, this is the comparison or this is kind of the update video from before where I didn't necessarily know these things. Uh, my experience now, my journey now, Easel definitely lacks some of the advanced features compared to the more specialized CAD CAM software like creating uh, VCarve toolpaths, 3D model support, ramping, and other fairly useful options that you use pretty regularly once you start moving in and getting more comfortable with it is th th they're missing. So that is one thing that I don't love about Easel. If you're not going to use them, not a big deal. If you feel the need or if you've started playing with it and it's missing, maybe that's why. Now for cost. Easel is only available as a subscription-based software, which means you will never own the software yourself. At 25 bucks US a month or about 35 Canadian for a monthly subscription, all the way up to you can choose to pay for three years, which you know ends up being about 600 US or 800 Canadian. It's not the cheapest software we're gonna talk about today, but it's also subscription-based and it's not the most expensive either. So um, if budget is a factor, Easel definitely should fit in there pretty nicely for you. The last thing we're gonna talk about for Easel is that it is the only online or cloud-based software that we're talking about today, uh, which means that it is not installed locally on your computer. It is cloud format, which means 
you can sign in anywhere and use it. Uh, so if that's handy for you to know, if you're moving around a lot and you don't have to worry about bringing a laptop or a computer with you, you can log in online and you have all your files at your disposal. Carbide is not next. Carbide. Carbide is up next, and like Easel, it has both free and pro versions. Uh, I haven't used it extensively, but I have used it from time to time, and I've even helped some people at work to use it to learn the ropes. I don't mind it at all. Some of the things I really do like about Carbide is the it's, it's a free version, and the free version right out of the box has all kinds of extras built into it that you don't have to worry about paying for an upgrade. V-bits, Booleans, built-in graphics libraries, those all come standard with the free version of it. It's wonderful, right there at your disposal. V-bits especially, because you have to pay to upgrade to get those out of Easel, but you can use them straight up in Carveco. Carvide. You can use them straight up in Carvide. Carvide. Carvide! That's amazing! Why do they all have to have the same sound? You can use them straight up out of Carvide, so that's wonderful to have. Carbide does have a really cool add-on called Carbide Copper to make PCBs if you need to make them. So, fairly specific, but if you do need them, it's a super handy thing to know about. And it's free. Some of the things I don't like about Carbide are, they're kind of similar to Easel, is that you need to get the upgraded version in order to get things like 3D model support. So, if you are going to use Carbide, you need to use the Pro version in order to get 3D model support, which, if you're not going to use it, it doesn't matter. So that may or may not be a factor. If you are going to use it, then you have to decide if you're gonna upgrade. This I just found out for version seven, because I've been running version six up until now, is that version seven will not save G code files natively. There's a workaround to do it. You can either download Carbide Motion and extract them, or you can save version seven as version six, and then uh, save your G code from there. Or you can save it straight out of version seven and you'll have tool changes built in. So it's a little convoluted and that's one reason I don't like it, is it takes some of the simplicity out of the software. Um, I understand why they're doing it, but it's a little bit annoying on my end and you know, you have to decide for you if that's a determining factor or not. The cost for Carbide is very reasonable. It's 120 US for a yearly subscription or 160 Canadian or 360 US or 480 for a perpetual license, which you'll then own. So of the softwares that are out there, it's relatively cheap and at 120 bucks or 160 bucks a year Canadian, you're looking just over, you know, 15, 16 bucks a month. It's pretty reasonable, especially for what you're getting out of it. Carbide is installed locally on your machine. It is not cloud-based, so if that is a factor for you, then keep that in your memory bank. Number three software is Carveco Maker. Right off the bat, it is paid software only, no freebies, but there is a, I believe, 14-day money-back guarantee, so you have a chance to try it in that workaround. Some of the things I really do like about Maker is that it is subscription-based for a full suite software. So it's not the only subscription-based software out there, but it is, I would say, probably the highest end software you can get that is subscription-based. So that's a pretty huge plus um, because we're talking kind of beginner level in the start of your journey. Journey, I stuttered. <laughs> You're gonna have to make this work. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Again, we're not talking beginner level stuff here, but it is something to know if that's something you are interested in doing in the future, that you are able to have multiple 3D objects within the same scene. So if you're creating something cool like a family crest, you can bring in multiple objects versus other software, you kind of have to work your way around. Maker gets the absolute nod here for being having the <laughs> a better package to work with. Now we're going to get into the things I don't love so much about Maker, and I... I feel bad saying it, but I'll be 100% honest, I never found Maker intuitive. Even though I'm pretty good at picking up new softwares pretty quickly, I have struggled with Maker. And I've heard lots of other people say this too, but I've also heard a ton of people say they love it. So it might just be me. Um, you're gonna have to get in there and try it for yourself. Unfortunately, it, it, I hate to say that, but that's the only way to find out if it's gonna work for you or not. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is does the software work for you? Like I said at the very beginning for Maker, there is no free trial, but they do offer a 14 money, 14 day, there's no free trial, but they do offer a 14 day money back guarantee. So you are able to try it and get your money back. I've never had to go through that process, but if you wanna go through it and let us know how it goes, you know, leave a comment and then, I've never had to go through that process, but if you feel like trying it out and you don't like it, let us know in the comments below how they were for giving you your money back. Now for the cost of Maker. It's about 15 US or 20 Canadian for a monthly subscription, or you can buy a perpetual license, which is about 1200 US or 1600 Canadian. As far as software location, it is like most of the others. It's locally installed, it's not cloud-based. If that's a factor for you, you should know about it. That's three out of four softwares, done. <clears throat> Did you like my little? Mm -hmm. You're gonna use that. I'm looking really forward to the whole YouTube universe seeing that. Guess what I'm gonna say? It's your favorite thing. Last but not least. 
And last, but certainly not least, VCarve. If you've watched most of the tutorials that I've done, VCarve has been my favorite software to work in. Um, it comes with both free and pro versions, and I'll talk about the free in just a second. Some of the things I absolutely love about VCarve, uh, and again, this is for me, this was my journey, is I found it to be the most intuitive software of the four when I started when I was starting with my CNC journey. Journey. Everything just made sense to me. And that's not to say that everything couldn't make sense to you for CarveCo, for Maker. Um, and that's why I absolutely recommend, even though it might be a little confusing, is to try them out because what works for me may not work for you. This is my journey, not yours. For me, VCarve just made sense right off the bat. The other thing that was kind of a big factor for me with VCarve was the fourth action, was the fourth axis functionality built right in. Uh, I think this speaks for itself as a company who has released a rotary axis recently. It was a pretty easy choice to use the software that had what we needed built in versus creating a custom package. So those are two big things that I liked about it. Some things I don't love about VCarve, that the full trial version, you can get a feel for it, you can test it out, but you can't save your tool paths unless you upgrade to desktop or pro. So it's a bit of a pro and a con in the same one because yes, you can get in there and play with it, but you can't actually test out the carving capabilities. That's a bit of a weird one, but it is just something to know about that you can get in there, get your hands dirty, try it out, but you will not be able to save any G-code files to actually test your carving. The second one about VCarve, and I know that a lot of people feel this way about it. They really want to use the software, but it's the upfront cost of it, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. There's no subscription option for VCarve, so you are paying for the software, but you will own it. Having said that, it is going to be more expensive than the other ones we've talked about today. We're talking 330 US or 450 Canadian for the desktop version, which limits you to 24 inches by 24 inches. So if you're doing anything outside of that, you would need to tile, or you can upgrade to the pro version, which is 670 US or about 900 Canadian. It's a lot of money. I'm not gonna lie to anybody and say it's not. For me, because I felt so comfortable with it, it was the one that I just rolled with and never really looked back. As far as installation goes, it is locally installed just like Maker and what's the other one? Carbide. <laughs> so it's not cloud-based. If that's a factor for you, now you know. We have covered the what I consider bloop, bloop. We have covered what I consider to be the four mainstream software choices most people look at when starting their CNC journey. Journey. So we've prepared a nice little chart here to help you visualize the comparison of those four softwares. You don't have ADHD, do you? You have no idea how hard this is. For people looking for the simplest software to use straight up, no questions asked, it will be hard to beat Easel. The interface is easy and clean to understand and you can carve directly from the software. The learning curve really is Easel. If you want a fairly simple software to learn, but budget is your main determining factor, you can't go wrong with Carbide. Carbide Pro breaks down to approximately 10 US a month or 15 Canadian. That's the cheapest of the four when you break it down into a monthly cost. It's hard to beat that. For budget, plus a higher end software, Maker certainly makes the case for its, oh, I gotta do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm doing it. Yes, I love it when they write themselves. <laughs> yeah. Mm, 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 mm. This is gonna be awesome. For budget plus high-end software, Maker certainly makers a case for itself. For me, the lack of intuitive feel was an absolute deal breaker, but again, lots of people are creating amazing things with it. If you want a higher-end software, but budget is your big factor, Maker could work really well for you. But for me, my favorite software, the best bang for your buck with all of the factors considered in is VCarve. There, I said it. <laughs> When you factor in all of the functionality, the built-in fourth axis capabilities, every toolpath option, 3D models, and most importantly, the software just feels familiar and intuitive, VCarve gets my vote. I think anyone coming from a graphics or 3D background should have a pretty easy transition into using VCarve. On the same hand, I've spoken to quite a few customers who have never touched CNC software before, and they were able to learn VCarve with a little bit of patience and some willingness to learn. VCarve and me, we just clicked right off the bat and we have been fast friends ever since. While 900 bucks is a lot of cash, if you need the pro version, it's rock solid, easy to use, intuitive, powerful software that will exceed your needs for years to come and help you get the most out of your CNC. So there you have it. Some real world advice to help you start your CNC journey. I hope I was able to clear up some of the uncertainty around the subject. It's a tricky one when you're starting out for sure. I know I say you don't need to master every software, but you might need to experiment with a few before you find the one that fits you and your needs best. Thanks for spending some time with us. Again, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to watch all the wonderful content we're making for you. We really do want to hear from you. So drop us a comment below on what you'd like to see in our next videos. And until the next one, see you around the CNC.
Are you new to the CNC world? Do you consider yourself a beginner and you're looking for some basic courses? Check out the playlist right here. We cover all kinds of cool topics to get you up to snuff with experts, not like me, but like other people that are experts in the CNC stuff. Check out that playlist right there.